Question for you. Who are the heroes of Battlestar Galactica? The ones who are on the front lines, fighting in the thick of battle and standing up for what they believe is right. The ones who the audience is supposed to root for. For most people, the answer is probably Apollo and Starbuck. They certainly fit the bill in the original series with its operatic tone and family-friendly sentimentalism. When it comes to the reboot, it's difficult to call anyone a genuine hero, at least in the romantic sense of the word. However, I still feel like most people's default answer would be Starbuck and Apollo, and if not them, Adama and Roslyn. But I'd argue that the real heroes of Battlestar Galactica aren't any of these people. If that title belongs to any two characters, it belongs to Carl Agathon, aka Hilo, and Sharon Valeri, aka Athena. Major spoilers for the entire show, but I assume if you've clicked on this video, you know that already. To those Battlestar fans, I'd also highly recommend checking out today's sponsor, The Sojourn, an original sci-fi audio drama created by friend of the channel Daniel Orrett, and featuring the voices of Martin Roach of The Expanse and Ben Prendergast of God of War Ragnarok and Apex Legends. Think Battlestar Galactica meets Master and Commander. The story follows a band of explorers venturing out into an unknown region of space in the hopes of finding a way to save their dying worlds. Suffice to say, they find much more than they bargain for. Check out the Season 1 collection of this critically acclaimed audio drama containing over 8 hours of content, including an episode guest written by myself. Click the link below to the Sojourns website where you can find all the platforms you can listen to the series on, including Audible, Spotify, Google Books and many more. You can also get the series and a wealth of bonus content, visual dictionaries, anthology shorts, posters, discounts and more by joining the show's Patreon page. Also jump over to the show's YouTube channel to listen to clips and learn more about the expansive lore of the show's universe. The Sojourn, the complete first season, out now. Now, terms like hero and villain are difficult to apply to the reboot of Battlestar Galactica because it's generally quite a bleak show. The Fugitive Fleet is constantly suffering supply problems, and the lingering internal conflicts of the Twelve Colonies often rear their heads, presenting the fleet's leadership with difficult moral choices. And in a show where everyone is in a tough spot, Carl Agathon and Sharon Valeri are in the toughest. Agathon starts the series trapped behind enemy lines, scrambling from shelter to shelter, fighting off centurions and radiation poisoning. Though the situation is being orchestrated by the Cylons, once Sharon switches sides, it becomes real. They have no Battlestar to fight battles with, and no Raptor waiting to rescue them. And it's not as if reaching the fleet suddenly resolves all their problems either. After fighting tooth and nail to get there, Rosalind's first act is to try and throw Sharon out of the airlock. Though she survives this, Sharon is made a prisoner aboard the ship, surrounded by people who hate her very being, and Agathon is seen by many as an enemy sympathizer. Neither of them has the connections in the military or political office to protect themselves. They have virtually no leverage, no reputation, and no support. Yet when opportunities arise for them to abandon the fleet, they always choose to stay. They don't hatch plots and schemes to manipulate their way to the top or seize their freedom by force. They endure the slings and arrows, hoping that someday their mere existence will be enough to change the minds of those around them. And eventually, it does work. Agathon is able to retain his position as a soldier within the fleet for much of the series, even becoming Galactica's XO at one point. But it's only by Season 4 that Sharon is finally given a commission within the fleet and accepted as a full member of the crew. The amount of mental, emotional, and in some instances physical strength it takes for both of these people to remain with the fleet is nothing less than astounding. You want me to lead a mutiny against the Sixes? It's the only way. You guys make me sick. Why? Because you pick your side and you stick. You don't cut and run when things get ugly. Otherwise, you'll never have anything. No, you guys can either help me or get the hell out of my way. Now, this story alone would be enough to make them compelling supporting characters, but the reason a viewer can root for them and not just admire them is because this is a love story. As I said before, Battlestar Galactica is often very bleak, yet this love story is one area where the reboot embraces the operatic storytelling more common in the original series. Most other romances in the show are either more complicated or more reserved. 
For example, Kara, Lee, Anders, and Dee is a fracked up mess of shifting love triangles rife with unrequited love, jealousy, betrayal, and heartbreak. Roslyn and Adama, meanwhile, is a tender romance which blossoms out of mutual respect. And <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with Baltar and Six, but Agathon and Sharon's romance is rather simple. Sure, Agathon is shocked at first when he finds out Sharon is a Cylon, but he gets over it relatively fast. By the second season, he's willing to risk everything to protect Sharon, and she is willing to follow him to a place she knows she'll be hated just to stay with Agathon. They do this because of the simple fact that they love each other. In their eyes, being together is worth all of the pain and torment. But where Sharon and Agathon go from supporting characters one can root for to the real protagonists of the story is when their relationship comes to embody one of, if not the core themes of the entire series. The overarching conflict between the Cylons and humanity is one born of ideology. Cylons fear humanity for what they might do when they have to compete with another race as advanced as they are, and humanity sees Cylons as lifeless machines, whose program-driven behaviour is incompatible with the human way of life. But on an individual level, we are shown time and time again that there isn't much difference between the two races. Humans and Cylons both feel deep emotions, they both believe in deities, and they both have hopes and dreams and ambitions. Separated from their societal and cultural baggage, there's no real reason for an individual Cylon and an individual human to fight each other. In fact, this is a point that Galactica 1980, of all things, made. We are enemies. Well, no, we're cultural dissidents. That means our cultures don't get along, but, but that's in their world. Here, things are, uh, different. In a way, Agathon and Sharon's relationship starts as a kind of remake of this episode concept. A Cylon and a human trapped on a planet together overcome their differences to stand and fight for one another. Although Agathon and Sharon start on the bottom rung of the fleet's power structures, their relationship affects larger changes within the fleet throughout the series. By seeing these two together, Adama, Roslyn, and many others come to realise how cruel and extremist the Pegasus crew are. Embracing Sharon as one of their own also sets the precedent for the rebel Cylons to later join the fleet in the final season. Both sides of this conflict overcoming their differences to help one another is thanks largely to Agathon and Sharon sticking by each other. One human and one Cylon who really see each other and realise there's no reason for them to fight. This is, I would argue, the core theme of Battlestar Galactica distilled into a single relationship. While other characters are undoubtedly the protagonists of specific episodes, Agathon and Sharon are the secret protagonists of the show overall. And by the end of the series, after all they've overcome, they deserve their happy ending as the real heroes of Battlestar Galactica. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and share to stay up to date on all of my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, jump over to my Patreon where you can see videos early, uncut, and ad-free. Speaking of which, I'd like to say thank you to all of my patrons and members now appearing on screen, with an ultra thanks to... Extreme Streamers, Tom, Dusk, Colin Camille, Patrick Fleming, Matthew Camille, Ed Mark Snar, Dylan Thomas, Lilac Yane, Howard Craig Akervik, and Kajing G. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.